Hello and welcome back to another Absinthe 5 uh, tutorial. You'll have to excuse any oddities in my delivery today. I'm having some interesting feedback issues in my ears because of a routing problem that popped up today that I'm not quite exactly sure how to fix and uh, I'd rather get this tutorial done for you all. It's been a little while since we posted one. so. Um, hopefully the <laughs> the audio issues don't really shine through in the finished product. So thank you in advance for bearing with the uh, the odd delivery <laughs> and cadence of uh, of the spoken word here. All right. So uh, just in the interest of full disclosure, you can see that there's no processing, no insert effects happening here on uh, absinthe. Uh, have a small EQ on my voice. Uh, so what you hear is what you get. Um, and we're actually just going to walk through this. Um, and rather than setting it up as we go in traditional ohm lab fashion, we're just going to walk through uh, and you're going to see uh, the entire patch as it was made. Um, but it is a finished product in advance. Just uh, trying to deal with these audio routing issues the best I can. So let's jump into this and we're going to start right off the bat with um, setting up the oscillator A module. Um, we're going to set this to run in ring mod mode uh, running a fifth uh, wavetable. Okay. Okay, it's going to be transposed just slightly and offset phase just a bit. Um, it's actually going to be modified by a base one waveform transposition way down. The number of unison voices is going to be increased to three, transposed up a bit for some interest and just a touch of randomization because as this sound develops you're going to see uh, a really nice opportunity for how randomization like this will actually be um, uh, taking it and and how it's going to nicely affect uh, the overall sound. Uh, already programmed in some uh, basic MIDI here. Uh, you're going to see that this is very much going to be treated like a pluck instrument uh, as far as how it's actually used. But the end result is a, a pretty nice um, evolving pad and we'll get into how that actually actually all happens here in just a bit. So uh, this is what your sound sounds like right this moment. I'm just going to short this just a touch. All right, that's nice. Uh, so on to the filter. Um, we're putting a low pass filter on this. Okay, so you can see, or here rather, just how much of a difference there is once this is in play. Okay, but we're going to extend that a bit through the cloud filter here. Uh, cloud filter can easily get out of control, so um, we're going to keep these settings uh, pretty much in the default mode here. Um, sure you'll recognize the filter from prior tutorials if you've tuned in before. We have used some crazy settings, uh, but this is going to be kept fairly wrangled in. So we're going to affect the tone with a filter here. Again, pretty basic settings, and we're going to back off the mix, which is what the balance is here. So it's not going to be a complete 100% wet mix. Uh, this is indeed going to be backed down just a bit. Uh, and here's what our sound is at this point. Very minimal. Uh, as you can see also, this has been set to run in a stereo mode. Uh, it's been offset slightly, it doesn't need to be. All right, we're going to get on to oscillator B. If you want to hear what that sounds like on its own, 
can do that. We can turn off oscillator A and come back to it later. This uh, oscillator module is going to be set to run in FM mode, stands for frequency modulation. A fifth waveform is loaded, transposed up quite a bit, four octaves to be exact, and a bit of phase has been introduced. It's going to be modulated. Uh, FM index is going to be set to seven, even, uh, running a smooth sawtooth wave transposed a bit, offset phase again, unison voices increased to three, transposed a bit for some more interest, and again just a touch of randomization is brought in. It's a very interesting sound. Harsh, cold, sharp, um, very interesting though. Now I'm going to add a filter, and again instantly it changes, backs way off. We're going to take this down just a bit volume wise, we're going to pan it to the left, so it kind of takes a back seat to this sound. So you're starting to hear a balance of uh, pluck and pad developing. Okay, I'm going to turn those both off. We're going to turn on oscillator C. As you can hear, it's already quite different from the others. Here's your ring mod mode running a big chord, transposed up an octave, phases offset just a bit. We're going to back off just a touch of this. It's going to be panned to the right, again making it wider, uh, especially once it's paired with oscillator B and the uh, slight left bias there in the stereo field. Um, modulation. Balance can be backed off a bit so it's not complete uh, wet signal. It's going to be a nice wet dry mix. Running an inharmonic three waveform, transpose down seven steps, get a nice little corded effect. We're going to keep unison voices to one this time around. Uh, transpose offset just a bit with a touch of randomization again. And again we're going to use a low pass filter which affects the sound thusly. Kind of a distant organ kind of a sound. Okay. Um, go ahead and add that with B and you can hear okay, just how much wider it is when it's uh, pan in those opposite directions. We'll get this back to normal here. Okay, so it's not too much, uh, too much offset, just enough to make it wide. Okay, and we're going to add back our first oscillator, which again is kind of like our lead sound. It doesn't seem like it at this point. Just going to have to trust. All right, we're going to add a wave shaper. Doesn't affect the sound a ton at this juncture, but you're going to hear this clicking. Uh, you're going to wonder why the input uh, decibel is so far down here. Let's so increase this. This is how we control just how much our sound is actually coming in phase. It's really what starts to make this interesting, okay? We're going to run this bypass filter here, okay? Changes it quite a bit, and you can hear that we're keeping a lot of the initial pluck uh, in there. All right, we're going to boost the decibels because without it, it's actually quiet. We actually want this to be a pretty robust sound. And we'll get into why in just a moment. We're going to jump over to the envelopes just so you can kind of see them. Uh, we're going to come back to this in a bit. Um, you go ahead and pause the video at this point and copy down uh, these envelope settings. If you're unsure about how to set up each one of these envelopes, you may want to refer back to one of the earlier uh, tutorials on 
how to use the envelope system in Absinthe 5. It's a very complex uh, and flexible tool that makes uh, so much more possible than ever should be possible in a synth, really. Um, Absinthe is amazingly deep, uh, and I guess what I'm saying is, is that the envelopes are, by and large, uh, a culprit. So uh, we're going to back back up to the patch window, and we're going to turn on the etherizer effect. And we're going to take a look at the parameter settings here. We'll turn off our audio, so I'm not competing with it. And you can hear just how much ring, just how much audio tail is added. Uh, that is primarily coming from our feedback right here. You can see it's all the way up at 94%. Uh, that is indeed significant. Significant. Um, now, we're adding this to the master, which means that this is coming in at the end of the audio signal chain. So you can see that A runs from top to bottom, and simultaneously B is doing the same, and C, and they're all feeding into the master strip. Now, this is running in a serial mode, if you will. This is not a parallel, so it runs through the wave shaper and then it runs through the filter and then it runs through the etherizer effect. Okay, um, we have taken off just a touch of the uh, high and low ends here. If you want to play around with this, you can get some very interesting results uh, from applying this directly to. Uh, the individual oscillators as well, which is um, which is a really neat thing to toy with, and we're going to come back to that in a second. Uh, the output, uh, you can see that the wet has been back down just a touch from the default setting, and the dry has actually been increased. Uh, this is just so we can retain some of the original appeal of the sound and not have it completely taken over by the wet signal. Um, you do not have to be running in surround mode to take advantage of this feature. Um, yes, you can create 5.1 surround sound patches with Absinthe 5, which is why it's such a popular choice for sound designers um, and producers and musicians working in the cinematic um, and gaming industries. Um, scoring with a beast like Absinthe is pretty darn awesome. But uh, you can use this feature just to simply add some interest and motion uh, to the stereo field. You can see that I've set it to rotate uh, in a counterclockwise fashion. Um, and it's running at a fairly low clip. Uh, Pre-delay, if you fancy um, figuring out the proper settings for pre-delay based upon the beats per minute of your project, there are, I'm sure, tutorials on how to do it. I personally use a rather uh, proprietary method that I don't divulge on a normal basis, but um, you can learn more about that in some custom training sessions, or you can just kind of take for granted that this setting right here is going to work for this sound. Uh, the rate is the rate at which the granular uh, synthesis effect is um, is moving. And then the grain duration is set at 100%. That also is pretty important. We're going to um, run this through a bypass filter, and we're going to set the filter quantization to a fifth. Now you can see that this is actually kind of wrangling this into within a predetermined uh, scale, if you will. So um, it keeps things within reason. Uh, here on the master track of the, or master settings rather, of the etherizer effect, you're going to see the time feedback, low pass, and gain settings. We're going to back down the overall output here just a bit. And this is what our sound um, is like here in the end. We'll have some drums kick in here for dramatic effect. One second.
sustain and you get a little brightness. A little on the funky side there. Uh, and of course, if you want to... directly to the individual channels. Okay. That's pretty nice. Let's come back here. Turn these to their default settings. As always, if you have questions about the sound for this tutorial or any other, hit us up in our forums. Try and reply as quick as possible, although sometimes we're a bit overwhelmed by the number of active and involved members of our community. So please bear with us. There's a lag in our response. Um, as always, please share with your friends and uh, let us know a little bit of your feedback in the comments in the area below. All right, we'll see you next time. Take care.